All right, fig lovers, we got a new variety to review today. This one's called Pernet Noir. This is a fig that uh, Harvey at Figaholics in California used to sell and grow at his orchard there. And um, at the time, I don't think I was ever really that interested in it, uh, believe it or not. And I think because of that lack of interest, Harvey decided not to sell it anymore. A few collectors still grow this. And um, I decided to finally get on board and grow it because I noticed that it has a really nice elongated shape. Um, and after realizing that having an elongated shape is beneficial in a humid climate, that's when I, I started to get interested in this variety. You can see that it doesn't really have a long stem, but it has a very long neck. And that long neck allows the fig to hang downwards. The eye is pointed towards the ground rather than upwards like some fig varieties um, ripen. And because that eye is downwards, the, the eye is not really affected or not uh, damaged typically by the rain. That's the most sensitive part of the fig as it's ripening because the figs ripen from the bottom up. So if you have a fig that is getting hit by rain, it's absorbing the moisture through the skin very quickly and typically it'll absorb the moisture in a place where it's softer and more ripe. So if it's gonna hit the eye, it's gonna absorb rain very quickly. And then because it's absorbing water, it's, it's expanding. Where else does that water go? If it's gonna absorb, it's going into the fruit and at that location, it's going to expand. And when it expands, it splits. And that's really, I think the most common reason actually for splitting. Um, but this variety I find it is great with that. Um, it must be great with it. Now, I haven't seen really much rain affect this variety, so I, I don't know how the skin quality is gonna behave. Um, I don't know how the split resistance really is gonna be because some figs, even though they have the right shape, or let's say they don't have the right shape, like Smith or Hativ de Argentile, they have a great skin, and the skin actually repels water rather than absorbs it. So even if it does hit a more sensitive area of the fruit, it's not as affected. Um, but I have probably good reason to believe this one would probably be pretty good. Now, I have a fig here that is pretty well shriveled up on the tree. So this is a good representation, I think, of this fig. We did do a tasting um, of a large amount of varieties uh, yesterday, and this one was a part of it. And for some reason, it had a bitter skin to it. Even though it's been really warm, we've had like a, a heat wave come through Philadelphia. And that's normally not the case. You know, normally if they're bitter in the skin, it's just simply because uh, it's colder outside. The metabolism slow down. I don't know why that is. And only certain varieties become bitter. Let me cut the uh, fig open here. Show you guys the inside. Now, I was also kind of turned off by this fig originally because it looks a lot like a black mission fig. But I've been on this rant about how, you know, not every black mission is created equal, or not every Hardy Chicago is created equal, not every Celeste is created equal. And so I was just turned off because I, I have not really had much success with the typical black mission types you can grow here. They're more cigar shaped fatter and they don't have a long neck. They have a short stem. The Brabus have a long neck, but the main crop does not. And for that reason, they don't do well. As I discussed, that longer neck really helps these varieties out. Um, they tend to crack Black Mission, at least a lot of them that you'll find, like Fico Nida I grew years ago and Maltese Falcon, um, Abaku, there's a number of them that are really similar to each other that I just was totally turned off by. Um, but then I found last year Rissoule, or Rissoulette. I'm really impressed by that one. It has a very short hang time. And I'm finding so far this one has a relatively short hang time, but not as short as the Rissoule. It does have Rissoule a similar flavor, uh, eating experience to a Black Mission, but the texture is really nice and thick. This one here, 
I've only seen it really ripen during a heat wave. So I don't know if the hang time is going to remain this short, but uh, regardless, it seems to be on the shorter end of things. All right, let's try it. All right, no bitter skin. Well, actually a little bit of bitter skin, but not much. And the pulp's fantastic. Just a hint of that bitterness is actually really nice. I prefer that. It's got a really nice thick jammy pulp. Not the best flavor, um, you know, cause it's just more mellow, similar tasting to a lot of other sugar figs. And that's what I would classify this as sugary, figgy, fruity, not necessarily berry, but a very, very nice texture. And that little bit of bitterness makes it, uh, for me, a next level in complexity. Reminds me a little bit of Nerucciola de Elba, but maybe less, a little bit less berry to it. Um, very productive tree. Seems mid-season. I like this fig. Um, that's a real nice pulp. And you can tell it's a high quality fruit, high quality variety. This isn't just some like, you know, seedling that popped up and we have no knowledge of it. And the characteristics are, you know, kind of lacking. This to me is a, like a nice um, bump up from a Black Mission fig. And I'll probably, if someone wanted a Black Mission fig from me, this is probably what I would sell them actually. Curious to know what their, their hardiness is, this tree's hardiness, and to see if it produces any Breba. Um, but I like this. I may even plant this one in the ground. I actually, uh, yeah big fan of this fig. So that's Pernet Noir. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button, guys. Check out the blog. Hit that like button. See you guys for the next video. Take care.